In Uvalde, Texas, flowers and crosses show a community in mourning. The tragedy here has sent shockwaves across the United States. In this town of over 15,000 inhabitants, a gunman attacked a school on May 24th. 19 children and two teachers died. As news of the mass shooting horrified the world, the question yet again has been, can the United States continue to live with its current gun laws? The shooter was 18 years old and able to buy two assault rifles with no trouble at all. Why do we put the need for people to own guns higher than the need for our children to be safe? As the debate rages, the people of Uvalde are still in shock. Miguel Cazares grew up in Uvalde. He knows Rob Elementary School well. His family has lived here for generations. His great-grandmother was from Uvalde, while his great-grandfather came here from Mexico. Today, for the first time, he's come to see the memorial that sprung up in the town center. The crosses are marked with the names of the 21 people who lost their lives, among them 19 children, including Miguel's much-loved cousins. This is the worst thing that's ever happened. I hope nothing like this ever, ever, ever happens again. No one should have to go through something like this. This town has lost all of these children. Each child affects every one of us. Each child was one too many lost. This man was not human. Miguel's cousin, Jackie Cazares, was nine years old. She loved singing and dancing. Annabel Rodriguez, Jackie's cousin and best friend, was 10. My last memory of her is with the family on a Saturday afternoon. The children were playing outside. We could hear them laughing. We were all happy. We were together as a family, like always, without a care in the world. Uvalde is a small, tight-knit community. Most people here have Latin American roots, especially Mexican. Here, family is central. Cousins are like siblings. Nieces and nephews are like one's own children. My family is staying quiet right now. Our focus is on being there for one another. As the town grieves, people are gathering from all over to offer their condolences. Some here believe in life after death. So they not only bring flowers, but also gifts to bring joy to the victims in their next life. Kids that die so they can have a toy in the afterlife. Personally, I cry every once in a while. Um, and it's just too many little kids, too many little angels gone, or something stupid. Um, and that's sad in itself. We're hoping that we can give a little bit of music to the community, um, as sad as, as it is, but we want to mourn with them as well. I don't think anybody should have that, that kind of a weapon. Hopefully something can get done because we don't, we don't need this kind of stuff happening to any kids. This is family. They're not just strangers. They're family. And even if you don't know them, one thing that you noticed when you came into this community is everybody's together. We feel connected and you need to be patient with them and hug them and watch, look at their faces because there's hurt 
on their faces and they just need a hug. Pastor Jesus has come from the neighboring village of Pearson. Today he visited one of his counterparts, a Catholic priest who has to hold 12 funeral services for children in the next two days. In his eyes, the perpetrator was still a child himself. Sometimes there are no values, and young people find the wrong answers to their problems. We're very close to this community. There are people and family members from my village with strong ties to this one, so the tragedy hit us hard. We're grieving for the state and for the whole country. Mass shootings have plagued the U.S. for decades. At least eight have taken place since the tragedy in Uvalde. But there's huge resistance to reform in a country where around one-third of adults legally owns a gun. This is a video produced by the powerful gun lobby, the NRA. It opposes any reform with the backwards argument of making America safer. Yes, a good guy with a gun stop the bad guy with a gun. In Texas, an 18-year-old can buy and use a gun. But to buy a bottle of tequila, the legal age is 21. Bill Raman is a licensed gun dealer. He doesn't want to see any change in U.S. gun laws. Buying a firearm in Texas requires sufficient funds and a 10-minute background check. That's all. Raman says the problem lies with the user, not the gun. Too many times we blame the weapon and not the person. Whenever there's a terrible accident with alcohol or drugs involved on our U.S. highways every year, we immediately blame the driver. We don't blame the car or the gasoline in the tank. A gun is just the easiest way to commit these terrible tragedies. Um, but it goes back to the individual that decides to do them. I personally believe that we need to take another hard look at parenting and mental health in the United States and the lack of access to mental health. But the school massacre in Uvalde has made him think twice. He admits that a higher age restriction could make sense. The age is, is somewhat of a factor there. Um, these weapons are, uh, can be destructive if in the wrong hands, as we have seen in the past couple of weeks. So I definitely think that our government's going to have to take a probably another hard look at uh, the age with which you're allowed to purchase these, uh, these types of weapons. As a fourth-generation Uvalde resident, he's deeply affected by the shooting. If it can happen here, it can happen anywhere. I'm sure the people, you know, when mass shootings started 25 years ago, that they thought their kids were safe at Columbine and, and Sandy Hook and Parkland, you know, and now Uvalde. We're forever cemented with those that I just mentioned. This is Oasis Outback, the store where the 18-year-old shooter bought his two assault rifles. He completed a brief background check, as is common across the country. Cameras aren't allowed in the store, and the manager wasn't available for an interview. Police say the guns were bought legally. Texas law has no problem with an 18-year-old buying a semi-automatic weapon capable of firing 30 rounds per minute. Assault weapons like these are so forceful that after the shooting, the children's bodies were barely identifiable. It's a Texas tradition coming together as a community, helping each other through hard times. This barbecue is raising money for the victims' families. Within two hours, they raised over $16,000. The money will go to family members who are now facing financial strain on top of their grief. Former students of Robb Elementary School and Uvalde High School are pitching in. I got it, I got it. I think it's certainly brought us closer, that's for sure. It has is, is pulled us together and showed us exactly how much we're willing to support and love on each other, that's for sure. I don't think the healing process ever really ends. I think we just continue with time. As time goes by, it gets easier. But um, 
it's never going to go away. I mean, we, there's, it's always going to be a healing process for us. Here, too, there are calls for gun law reform, even from gun owners. I support gun ownership, absolutely. I think there is a, a limit. We can't do away with assault weapons, and maybe what we do is uh, increase the age limit, or maybe, you know, make it harder to buy uh, uh, high-capacity weapons. And I don't know why we wouldn't do some of those common-sense things. I think the general public uh, is supportive. In terms of deaths, this was one of the worst school shootings in U.S. history, and it's attracted global media attention. The victim's family members are overwhelmed and no longer want to speak publicly. Many say the press has grown too insensitive. That's also why there are police and security personnel everywhere, making sure journalists don't overstep. The families deserve privacy as they grieve. Miguel used to be in the U.S. military. He's used guns himself. He agreed to talk to us because he believes that personal tragedies have to be told for gun laws to finally change. We need to have more control at the federal level. No one here wants to see this happen again. Those in power need to stop arguing, pull together and finally find a solution. But that seems unlikely. Uvalde is a town in mourning, a town that will never be the same again. The community will do its best to heal, but what remains is the sinking dread that, anytime, anywhere, this will happen again.